My name is Karen Howard and I'm the CEO and Executive Director of the Organic and Natural Health Association. We're about eight years old now um, and we are kind of a unique trade association in Washington DC in that we represent the entirety of the dietary supplement supply chain. All the way from raw ingredients to brands, um, consumer organizations and retailers. We spend a lot of time doing really good work around regenerative agriculture issues, supply chain management, and recently we've become quite engaged in terms of t working to diversify the, the people that we reach um, with our messages about consumer health and dietary supplementation to include people of color, and that's one of the reasons that we have engaged in the effort that we're talking about today. My name is Brian Terry, Director of Sales of Nordic Naturals. I oversee the food, drug, mass, uh, internet wholesale, and pet business uh, for us. I've been there about four years. Uh, currently, uh, extremely passionate about helping to bring diversity into the natural products industry as well. Um, I've been completely supported by uh, Karen uh, with the Organic and Natural Association as well as Nordic Naturals as a company. I think I underestimated the impact that it would have. We spent an enormous amount of time and energy making sure that all of our members were connected to one another and got very creative in a lot of ways. So I've, I have not felt that sense of emptiness in my life that I know a lot of people have until I got here and I've had conversations and opportunities show up that I never would have been able to do with planned scheduled Zoom calls. It's been phenomenal. I agree. It's, it's been one of those things where I think I underestimated uh, just how much it kind of means to get back in the energy when you're on the floor and you see all these people, all these companies, all these brands, and you're like, oh wow, this is just an energy that this industry gives you. And I think that sometimes when you're on the Zoom and you can get a little disconnected from that, um, I think that's what it's really meant for me. I mean, it's a personal story. So I belong to a boot camp um, that we have worked out outside this whole entire time, even in 12 degree weather. And one of my colleagues is a, a board member of the foundation. And so we participated in a couple of fundraising events and I fell in love with the message. Um, I, Dwight and Shelley have the most amazing and compelling story. Uh, her story is phenomenal and how she literally had to piece together her entire academic career because she couldn't afford tuition but she continued to go to class and has and they have created this opportunity for people to be able to make this donation so I'm very passionate about it as I'm sure all of my friends will tell you because I tend to speak of it nonstop and the board has been incredibly supportive um, and we can we you know I think we're doing good work but I think it's just a drop in the bucket of what we can do So we created a fund in the name of the Org Organic and Natural Health Fund because it's a good catch-all phrase, not just because it's the name of the association. And it incorporates the food side since we're just dietary supplement driven. We created that fund specifically so that we could begin to introduce the topic of our mission-driven industry to a very passionate, talented, and highly educated group of people who are unfamiliar with it. Um, and, and now we've already given out, the foundation has already given out, I believe, six $2,000 scholarships, and we're going to continue to raise those funds to be able to support that and grow that. The hope is that we can also engage in some other additional activities, like building internship opportunities, um, do more mentoring, and, and become, uh, you know, help them expand their reach, um, and, and then by, in exchange, be able to really take our work out into the world in a new way. I think the event went extremely well. I mean, I, there were so many people, I was surprised. That you, every time you, you walk into the, when you have events, you're always a little nervous because you never know, especially because this is something that's a little unique, a little different than what the, uh, I would say the industry is used to coming for. So you you have a lot of people that, you know, have been wanting to be advocates of, of different, you know, bringing people into this industry. And for me, that was what it was really about. Um, it was something that I was very passionate about because it's done, the industry's done so much for me. I've learned so much, it's created a career. And to see all the people in the room and willing to donate and wanting to add more people um, of color and really 
opportunities was a great starting point um, of what that looks like for not only now, but for future generations, because this will continue for, for years. I will add that we did raise over three thousand dollars. So that is, you know, in my mind, that is a success. I think the bigger success is that every time we do an event like this, we're bringing more people into the room who haven't heard the story before. And Brian got to tell his story last night about the importance of HBCUs in his life, and it, I believe, drove lots more donations into that can. Um, and I think that's really important because we can do what we do, but until the next person tells the next person, you know, we don't have a movement, and we're looking for a movement. I think the strategies are things that really start at each place that anyone works or is looking to grow. Um, you can, you, everyone has a circle, everyone has a group of friends, everyone has a company in which they work for, work with, you have a department that you work with. I think each of those small steps are areas to look for the right people, the right candidates. But to me, the biggest thing with the industry as a whole, because I didn't know about the industry um, when I first got started, but I would say to maybe try to fish where the fish are is, uh, is, is what I'll uh, sometimes say. Um, when I look out and you're at a, a, an event like Expo, um, sometimes you'll, you'll notice the differences um, that are around. But, when you're, but I would say the strategies can really start. Um, what does an opportunity look like? Did you know what do what is it that I want to accomplish? Is this is this a unique viewpoint that I never really thought about before? And those are small questions that can be asked. That can be a really starting point. Do I have an internship? Do I you know what does a mentorship program look like? Um, is there an entry level job? Is there a mid level job? You know, did I you know interview as many candidates as I could and consider all perspectives when I was looking for those roles? There are, there are a lot of uh, HBCU colleges in general. Um, I mean, there's, I used to have the exact number, um, but there are are several hundred um, in, in general. And in many, in some are in many locations in which you are. There's, all, there's college fairs, um, there's career opportunity, um, career centers within those campuses. Um, all of these are different things that is how I found out about every job. It's just like every other company within career services at every company uh, at every college in which I was at. So that's that's one way to start. Also, just uh, partnering within your networks. You know, if if you have a company that's in different locations, now there are a fair amount that are down south. Uh, that's where the large majority are. But if, so if there's opportunity in um, for internship or mentorship programs, or we can even also start within the scholarship program. Because I personally, when I got scholarships, I remember where those came from, and that can definitely be the starting point for a lot of these students as they're looking for job opportunities in the future. I would just encourage everyone to be curious. Um, you know, to ask the kinds of questions that we don't typically ask ourselves about our workplace and our environment and to really look around the room and notice that we're in the health industry and the people who are, have been most poor, heavily impacted by the pandemic are people of color. And we know, just as an example, because I barely can get any conversation out without, without talking about vitamin D, we now know definitively that that's a really important ingredient. So we're not doing our job well if we aren't serving all those populations. And at ONN, we have spent enormous time, energy, and resources making sure that we're educating people on these issues through the media. And that's important, and we, we think we're very successful at that. And we also need to be successful as companies and individuals at making a real commitment to those health standards, being universal for everyone. So I would, I would just encourage people to be very creative in their thinking about their marketing, uh, their outreach, how they hire, and look for new ways to challenge themselves um, to make this, this industry really f reflect the world that we live in. I would say from my standpoint, the natural products industry has 
so many companies from food to uh, ingredients to supplements these uh, and as well as multi-billion dollar corporations that are now working to either acquire as well as startup companies that are looking to get off the ground so what we have what we have is an opportunity for access for people that are looking for for career opportunities and to me as we can embrace our arms just like we can for all the different movements that the natural and organic industry has been a part of women's health you know just the spearheading of events um, in regards to gluten GMO all these different things we can have we can accomplish the same thing here in general because it will help raise the tide for all boats.